For this exercise, you are going to need your practice mannequin head, your Joyce Jade Eyelash Extension Pro Adhesive, your set of Joyce Jade Straight Tweezers, also your Joyce Jade Classic Eyelash Extensions, and make sure that you're using the thickest extensions that you have, which would preferably be a 0.15 or 0.25. You also wanna have your micropore tape and then your practice lashes. The first thing that I want you to do is to go ahead and open up your practice mannequin head. And remove the plastic from it. Once you have removed your mannequin from your plastic, I want you to take your micropore tape and you are going to place two strips in the center of her open eye. We are placing it on here so that when we place our strips on there, that they lay in a position where you're going to be able to comfortably lash your mannequin. So again, on both sides, place it right over that open eye in the center of the open eye. Once you're done with that, you're going to take your strips and remove them from the tray. I always bend it just a tad bit. Get that strip out of there. And you want to place it right above the tape onto the plastic, making sure that it's not touching the tape. These strip lashes have a sticky back to it. And if it's on the tape, then it's not gonna stick the way that it should. So if you can see that sticky tape to it, place it right above that open eye and make sure that it's laying flat, not flat, but make sure that it's laying smoothly. Right above that tape. So to create a lash map, we are going to do the doll eye and also the cat eye style. The doll eye is where the center of the extensions are gonna be the longest and it tapers off to a shorter extension on the side. And then the cat eye is where the longest extensions are gonna go on the outer corner and the shortest extensions are going to go on the inner corner. So to achieve this, I like to divide my uh, lashes into three sections. So for the cat eye, which is what we're gonna start with, I'm gonna draw two lines to make three sections. On the inner corner, I'm gonna write 12 because we're gonna use uh, the extensions 12 in a size 12, 13, and 14. So for the cat eye style, on the inner corner, I wrote 12. In the center, I wrote 13. And on the outer corner, I wrote 14 because those are the extensions that we're gonna use for this exercise. And now for the doll eye, I'm going to create five sections using four lines. I always kind of pinpoint my midsection first, and I'm gonna write 14 there. And then the other two sections on the sides, I'm gonna divide that into half. And then I'm gonna write 13, 12, and then 13, 12, in order to create that doll eye appearance. Now, before I start the service, I always wanna take a piece of paper towel and also tape that to my client's forehead. Um, you know, resting your hands on her forehead is a must for stability, and that is gonna be the only skin-to-skin -skin contact that you'll have. So on top of being new technicians, you may drop lashes periodically on her forehead, or maybe your client may have sweaty skin or oily skin, and you know, you just don't wanna have that skin-to-skin -skin contact. So go ahead and put a piece of paper towel over your client's forehead. So once we're done with that, we're going to prepare our lashes to get set up. So first things first, because we are using 12, 13, and 14, we are going to grab um, 12, 13, and 14 from our tray, making sure that you lift it up by the number and you're gonna place it on the back of your non-dominant hand. Make sure that it's close to the knuckles and make sure that the tips are facing outward. So I'm gonna grab 13 and 14 and place it right behind as well. Now, 
Now, after a while, the extensions start to lose its stickiness on the back. So I like to take a couple pieces of tape and stick it down to make sure that it's nice and stable. That way, when I pull my extensions, it's not going to make the tape lift. Once I'm done with that, then I'm gonna take my adhesive and shake it up for about 30 seconds. You always wanna make sure that you shake it to ensure that all the chemicals are combined. This is really important and it can affect whether or not those lashes um, actually stick. So make sure that you shake it up for 30 seconds in between each and every last one of your clients. And then you're gonna place your glue ring on your finger if your fingers are a little chunky like mine, I like to stretch out the glue ring and make sure that it's lifting up. So because you're gonna be resting your hands just like this, you wanna make sure that the glue ring is not tilted to the side. You actually wanna be able to look inside that glue well, so make sure that it's lifted up. And then you're gonna use one drop of glue in your glue well. So now we're gonna start with the isolation process. The isolation process is why it takes this technique so long to do. It's also why you can charge so much as you can, as you like for these services. So you're gonna place your tweezers in between your fingers, your thumb and your pointer finger and have them resting on top of your middle finger, just like this. And what I like to do and teach my students to do is to use both tweezers to help you move those lashes out of the way because it just ensures that, you know, you're gonna be able to do it effectively. And when you use both tweezers, it actually helps. So let me zoom in just a bit. And so for the first eye, for the isolation hand that has your lashes on it and also your glue ring, you wanna make sure that this tweezer is in alignment with the bridge of her nose going straight in. That is the only way that you're gonna be able to go in. And when you open up your tweezer, you're gonna be able to push everything out of the way. So first make sure that you're in a comfortable position with you being on a stool, you know, you can move around her head, but if you're using your mannequin head, it's okay to turn her gently, but make sure that that hand is comfortable um, and make sure that it's resting on her forehead and that these tweezers are going straight in, again, in alignment with the bridge of her nose. So then with my non-dominant hand, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my tweezers into the lashes and move them over to one side. With the isolation tweezer, I'm gonna use that, get this one eyelash that's sticking out and get it in between the tweezer, opening it up. You're gonna move the lashes to one side. That one eyelash that is sticking out, you wanna get that in between these tweezers, just like this. Move the other hand out of the way and this is proper isolation. I'm gonna demonstrate that again. Move the lashes to one side, get that one eyelash in between, move the isolation hand out of the way. I'm gonna move the lashes to one side, get that one eyelash in between, hold it in place. Move the lashes to the side, get that one eyelash in between and hold it in place. A couple things about doing this isolation is when you're moving the lashes, you always wanna make sure that you are using the tips of the lashes to move them because when you try to come to the base, you're not that mobility is not there. So always use the tips. Again, to show you, move the lashes to one side, get that tweezer in between, get that one eyelash in between and hold it in place. And this is all you're going to do for the isolation process. You're, you're going to be very, very gentle with those natural lashes. You're barely touching them. All you're doing is moving them out of the way by barely touching the tips. And of course, I'm making it look a lot easier than what it actually is. So I want you guys to bounce around and do the isolation a couple times. Once you have that down, now it's time to have an, gain an understanding on how to properly grab the extensions. So what I always do is I fan out my lashes just a tad bit, and then I'm gonna grab that lash by the tip and pull directly to the side. 
you never, ever, ever want to grab an extension and pull this way or pull it straight up because what will happen is you'll take that C curl and you'll turn it into a curl pattern that's non-existent. So again, fan the lashes out, grab the lash by the tip, pull it to the side, and that is how you properly remove the extension from the strip. Also, you have to make sure that you're not grabbing the extensions um, too tightly. One thing that I know is that when you press too tightly on these tweezers, they open up at the tip, which can make your extension kind of wobbly within there. So, you know, you only want to use a little bit of light pressure, grab that extension from the side and pull it. Now, once you have an idea of how to do the isolation and you also have an idea of how to pull the extensions, now it's time to actually lay those extensions onto her natural lashes. The way I teach my students to get that done is to create a bridge by placing an, an extension there, 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 and there, and then bounce around. Place an extension right there, place an extension right there, and there, and then just kind of bounce around. The reason why you want to do that is because you want to give those extensions a second to dry um, before moving them right next to each other. So we're gonna go ahead and create that bridge. So I'm gonna start to create my bridge and I'm gonna start by isolating. I'm gonna move the lashes to one side, get that one lash in between and hold it in place. I'm gonna grab my 12 extension from the tip and pull it to the side, dip it in the glue, and you only need a teeny tiny bit of glue. And then I'm gonna take that extension and gently set it on top and let it go. Now, as you can see, that extension was leaning just a tad bit, so then I took it upon myself to just use the tips of the lashes to make sure that it's sitting up straight. So now I'm gonna move over just a tad bit, isolate, grab my extension, make sure that you grab one, dip it in the glue, set it on top, making sure that that extension is not touching the lash line, and set it up straight. 13 section, so I'm gonna grab a 13 extension, dip it in the glue, set it on top, and let it go. Isolate, grab my extension, dip it in the glue, set it on top, and let it go. Now, if it's leaning, this may happen sometimes. Use the tip of your tweezers to set that extension up. Now I'm in the 14 section. Hold it in place, grab my 14, dip it in the glue, set it on top, and let it go. And there I have my bridge. Now from here, once you have your bridge, you're just gonna bounce around and go ahead and continue to do your full set. Well, not your full set, but this one eye, just bouncing around and getting those extensions all over. If you have too much glue onto your extension, which as you can see, I have three dots of glue, I'm just gonna take some of that glue and wipe it onto the tape and then place it on there and let it go. And the whole key to doing a good set of eyelash extensions is to make sure that the extensions are sitting up correctly to make sure that they're not stuck together and also to make sure that you put the extension in the correct position. and also to make sure that those extensions are not touching the eyelid. That's really, really important because that can cause your client pain. And that's really the most important thing is to make sure that it's not touching the skin.